services from the refuge. Yeah, we've just put a bid together with our colleagues from the refuge and uh, the children in the police department. And um, as the family say, at the moment, uh, we were one of the successful authorities out of 46 Welsh and Dublin municipal authorities who were successful in securing funding. So we're working with NACA and the organisation um, for supporting families of crime. And we, in the bid, we've suggested we get access to 12 units of accommodation, uh, but we're starting with six.
from those um, who oversee the implementation of those policies and procedures, and also from those staff on the front line who deliver the service, such social workers, family support workers, health workers, police, and people from the voluntary and independent sector. And crucially, we spoke to those who were on the receiving end of the service to see if their experience matched um, what we're being told. And I have to say that what we did hear from them, of course, just to pause, halt, and go back and have another look at what we've been told um, in the first instance. But I would like to most sincerely thank all those people who gave their time and their experience in helping us put the report together. In summary, we learned from listening to these people that there is a strong belief that there are robust policies and procedures to help recognise and react to abuse. That these policies and procedures are strongly supported at a senior level by all the agencies involved. We also established that the policies and procedures are only part of what is needed because the other factor is that those policies are understood by all in the safeguarding role and implemented consistently and speedily and that was where our focus uh, went. Some of the agencies were very confident in their response but others felt the pressures on resources and staff and training awareness and opportunity could produce oversights and decisions that were not consistent. Um, in total, we made 20 recommendations based on what we heard, and we grouped them into five categories. First, we made some recommendations about organisational structure, some of which have already been acted on. Uh, we made a series of recommendations about the policies and procedures, some relating to improving communication with users of service and the various contributors, and some on improving the understanding of thresholds, because we did, we did pick up that that was an area where there was uh, some misconception, some confusion. We remained at the end of this review concerned about the use of special guardianship orders and while we understand that at a national level there is enthusiasm for their use, we still believe that a high level of supervision and support needs to be in place when they are used. The next set of recommendations related to improving partnership working and in this we are particularly concerned the relationship between schools and the MASH is strengthened and more is done to achieve consistency in schools and GP practices in implementing the policies that are agreed. When we looked at staffing levels of frontline social care, we did have concerns about the impact that the, underway, that the reorganisation that's been underway was having on them, and also about the size and the complexity of caseloads for social workers and the support that's available for them in what is a most stressful working environment. And our final recommendations relate to the role of the Policy Performance Committee in safeguarding, and we'd like to establish a protocol of understanding with the local safeguarding report. And we'd also like a review to be undertaken of the governance arrangements to ensure that each of the bodies that are involved have a clear remit to avoid adjudication and make sure that each has clear reporting lines. Um, now that the review is finished, I would like to thank my colleagues who have put so much work into this, Wendy Clements, Jenny Ogle, Jean Stapleton and Denise Roberts, for their commitment and their contribution. And I'd also like to thank, thank Simon again. Um, and of course, Alan Page for the absolute dedicated, particular support
challenging those responsible to review and improve. I think that this review came to light from the Medicine Service users, some people who have been affected by the issues that we were examining. And it seems to me we're missing a trick actually in committee as well. If we don't find a way where we can hear the experiences of people and not just listen to the very high level and excellent reports of our hard working officers that we have, who are dedicated. Um, but we need to know the other side of the picture. And some of that comes perhaps in our own ward work and um, the people that we need to know every day where we must bring that into our scrutiny. Um, I'd really just like to highlight the recommendation which was number nine. Everyone has made mention of it about special guardianship. <coughs> Absolutely. I suppose with any with any um, referral process, it's always helpful if you uh, take the opinion of the referrer and the referred to.
partners to sign up to either a line or share the kids um, so that we can actually make the best use of what we call sometimes the Wirral Pound. So it is about looking at our budgets in the home. And then finally, just to say that the children's strategy is part of a much wider suite of strategies. Um, so later, if you're going to talk about improving children's life chances, and there's also strategies in respect to zero tolerance in respect of domestic abuse, uh, housing strategies, the skills strategies, uh, all of them uh, linked in as children and families live in their communities in the world. Just by way of reminder, uh, there are three pledges that this strategy really focuses on. The children are ready to school, young people are ready to work in Africa, and vulnerable children reach their full potential. Just a little bit about what we know that we're going to put in the strategy. Uh, this is broad information about all children. Um, so 23% of world's population are 0 to 19, and this is projected to increase. Uh, the biggest increase is in this strategy. <coughs> Thank you. 
youngsters who live it to have a statement or an education as a care plan, looking at all the ways we can get in early. If a child needs a plan, they need a plan. But are there parenting support ways, behavioural support methods that we can wrap around children in schools to, to get services right as early as possible and, and hit the spot as soon as we can? And particularly work with youngsters where there's anxiety and poor mental health uh, to intervene.
how they're even going to see them. They will have a steady job when they're old, and I do believe that paid employment, meaningful pay <coughs> paid employment is probably the starting block and everything else follows from that. So what I was interested in, are there certain indicators that would not automatically put a child who is not going to have a child on there, but all of the common factors that we can then prevent, work on a preventative level? I mean, there's, a, there's a piece of work that's been undertaken around what prevents children from being ready for school or what, or what supports children to be ready for school. What, what we've done locally is looked at um, only a small number of youngsters who are not engaged in employment and training who are neat and in fact tracked. So we've done a, a, a reverse piece of research almost right back to number five to try and understand some of the issues that were affected. Um, and I haven't got all those issues to hand, but they are issues such as being in a family environment where they're not stimulated, promoted, you know, and encouraged. So families where they're read to, families where somebody notices um, the homework when they bring it home from school, or notices um, if, if something doesn't quite look right. Sometimes it's the quieter children in the classes as well, so not the ones that really hit the radar. Might be ones that are boisterous or that are ones who always have the hand up with the answer. And it's, it's I and mean, there will be a lot of family features that, that play into this. Um, I'll be able to give you more information about that research. Is that okay?